All right, bad motherfuckers. We are live right here in the Cole and Trevor fucking humble abode. That's right, I'm talking about the motherfucking bad apartment. This is our podcast, the Bad Apartment Podcast. Thank you, ladies and gents, for tuning in. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, um, it's been kind of a boring week, you know? Not a whole lot of exciting shits happened. Uh, not a whole lot of shit's been going down in the video game and movie worlds. Although, we did go see Spider-Man Homecoming, so we're going to talk about that probably closer to the end of the podcast. Um, so yeah, um, it's been pretty cool. For those of you watching at home, thank you for tuning in. Uh, oh, in, in, ca- in case you forgot, I'm, I'm Cole, and that is Trevor. Oh, that's right, I'm sorry. I'm yeah. Trevor, he's Cole, Cole, yeah. Trevor. Um, super cool as always, super fucking Fuego Flame. All right. Well, good start, Trevor. Thank you. No problem. Thank you for that. Greetings, bitches, by the way. Just so you don't forget, I'm here, too. All right, so what do you want to talk about <laughs> right What you want to talk about right now, Trevor? Um, okay, so uh, I was thinking about this. I was sitting – I don't want to say sitting in my room. Okay. But um, I'm, I'm talking – I've talked talk, talk to girls before. about. You, you I, have? Yeah. No, uh – I've talked to girls okay. who've been on, like, Tinder and shit like that and okay. how, you know, guys will, out of the blue, sometimes the first thing, but just out of the blue, will I send a fucking picture of their cock. Right. The the classic dick pic story. The classic dick pic. Well, I, I mean, that's kind of – I feel like that's one of the reasons why you have Tinder. Uh <laughs> Well, okay, not that's not, not what I, that's not what I mean. Not to send dick pics. It's uh, I thought it was kind of made to not send dick pics. If that if that makes any sense, right? Because if you're on Tinder, you can't actually send pictures to anybody that are like on your phone. Yeah. If you're gonna send a picture, it has to be like a GIF or GIF. I don't wanna get into that right now. That's uh. A fucking GIF. Everyone knows. Everyone knows it's a GIF. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen, my microphone's fucking up, and I need to fix it. I mean, you say GIF, I say GIF, we're fine. Um, yeah, so you can't just send random pictures, so you have to save all your dick pics for when you actually get the person's number, I think. That's the that that's the new trick. Yeah. Have you ever sent a, a dick pic, Trevor? I have not. You, you've never once sent a dick pic? Nope. Not even like a girlfriend? Nope. What Nothing. If, what if someone asked you to? Um, probably not. You just refuse? Yeah. Why not? Dude, I've seen fucking Snowden. I don't want pictures of my dick <laughs> floating around floating around on the internet. I don't think Russia cares about your dick. At least not that much. I don't know. What I, I but the the problem with this is is what I can't fathom. Okay. Is or the fact that these dudes have such fucking honkers and testiculars. So you've been looking at them then? No. <laughs> Where out of they think it's okay to just boom, here's my penis, you know? Mm. Like what the fuck is with that? Um, I mean, what are they? What I are they trying understand. to get at? Well, well, my thing is every every man loves to get a good nude, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, so the, I feel like whether if you're gay, straight, bi, trans, whatever, the female body just seems to be more appealing aesthetically. Oh, a penis is not than pretty. Male. Yeah, that's what I'm getting at. You know, circumcised or not, we, you know, whether you're full of schmegma. Or, or or totally clean. <laughs> a dick is a gross thing to look it at. Is. It's it kind of like a little mole rat, you know, just, <laughs> just kind of sneaking up behind <laughs> you, just, just, just weaseling its way into you. Yeah. It's, dicks are gross. I mean, that's why they they made the movie Alien because dicks are so gross. Yeah. You know the movie Aliens? I won't get into that. What, what, what we're trying to get at, ladies really and gentlemen, later. But is, no, is dicks it, are gross. Is especially to the ladies. Yeah. N- we're sorry. Well, okay. You shouldn't be sorry because you never sent a dick pic. I've never sent a dick pic, but I'm sorry that penises are gross. And <laughs> any 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 woman that lets a man Uh-oh. have sex with her, yeah, thank you. Oh, hey, Ripley. Because you were doing God's work. <laughs> um, I, men, men are stupid and men are gross. I have to admit something. What's up? I I have sent a, a dick pic before. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. So it's probably out there. It's probably out there on the internet somewhere. Really? Oh, like a venge- like a, you think a vengeful X? Probably. I've only sent one in my entire life, and it wasn't like one of those weird close-up ones. It was like farther back, but I was smart enough not to show the face. So, was so it to who I think it is. I don't know who you think it is, 
but I mean, I mean, are we talking far back? This was years ago. Okay, this was years I got ago. You. I got you. Um, she was curious. I mean, she she knew what it looked like. You know, it wasn't like a mystery to her. Yeah. But <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we we were bored, and yeah, I totally you know I sent a dick pic. You know, the text shot up shot up into space, hit a satellite, went to her phone. It's out there somewhere. I don't know if she still has it or not. Some fucking Twilight Zone aliens have probably seen your. You're schlong, dude. If aliens exist, they've seen my dick. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's. I mean, that's cool. That's all right. I mean, yeah. I, I get. I get that. You yeah. Know. And it's, it's not like. I mean, I'm not, I'm not trying to brag or anything. It wasn't impressive. <laughs> it was a very lackluster oh, dick. Oh, really? Yeah. Because you can't. I mean, when you're sending a dick pic, from experience, you don't go full flaccid. You have oh, to. No, 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 you have no. to spruce it up a little bit. Oh no 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 no. Yeah yeah. No. You don't. You don't know what you're doing if you just send in a, just a straight. You know, like like right out of bed dick pic. Well, no, what? You gotta pump it up. Just, just a pump action dick pic, you know. I want to pump you up. But but you know you don't want to be a hundred percent either. And that's enough about penis. Because that's a, we can't talk about dicks on this podcast. I mean we can, but I don't. Think, I have a lot to say about. I don't dicks. think the people at home. People love hearing about dicks. You think? Maybe I don't know anybody. Touche. <laughs> well, um. Yeah. Okay. We here's, we can get off dicks. Let me let me let me. Okay. One more thing before we get off this. Okay. <clears throat> I think it's funny. Me and Cole were talking about this earlier today, and I think I think I get why these dudes just right off the bat send a picture of their wiener. Okay. You're, you're, you're getting in their head. I was I was telling Cole. No we were talking intended. about this, and we've both come to the conclusion that the funniest meme out there on the internet is the picture of the bird that just says. You want, want some fuck? You want some fuck. And we were saying, <laughs> we were saying, well, if you could put that meme on Tinder, right, oh, yeah. and send it to every girl you match with, it's bound to work. At least on, some of the time. On, on at least like one person, oh, right? I see where you're going. So with they're this. thinking if they just send out a mass picture of their twangs, ch- right? Like maybe, may, maybe a lady will like. They're that. gonna get a girl fucked up enough to think that's a good thing to do with somebody. Yeah. Oh. So maybe that's why they do it. You know what? It might work. I'm not going to start doing it on the regular. Yeah. But it probably does work. Okay, it's kind of like if you're at a bar or something, you have to say – I mean if you just like keep saying things, eventually, like like those numbers, you're going to hit gold eventually, right? Kind of like a gold detector, right? Mm-hmm. Or a, a metal detector like on a beach. Eventually, you're going to find something. You yeah. Know, it might be in a few years, right? But you're going to find something eventually, at some you know what I'm point. Saying? Yeah. Well, no, totally. It is a numbers game. It's all about odds. So those guys, those guys are like math. Those guys are like the mathematicians of of, of the sex world. I wouldn't put it. I wouldn't put them. No, they're high. playing the odds, man. I would say like just yeah. learned how to count cards. Right. And going out to. But play you can't be afraid deck. of failure, though. If you're just if you're just whipping it out and sending sending well, pictures of it. That's this one beautiful word I like to call desperation. Shout out my obnoxiously so, large bottle of water. Wait, so so you're not saying that you have to have balls to send a dick pic? <laughs> Nine times out of ten, I think you've got to be desperate. That's true. All right, so you, you want to talk about something a little bit more intelligent? Yeah, than let's get off of wieners. <laughs> um, okay, uh, I actually I wanted to talk about plants because I uh, okay on the regular I have to um, I have to talk to to vegans. Well, one vegan in particular, and I don't want to name names. Uh, you know, you know what? I've already gotten in trouble for talking about people on the podcast. I shouldn't be talking about. I don't Ex- ex-girlfriends to be exact. What is that? It's just me. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. Okay, so so it's like I did some research into into plant life mm-hmm. recently, and I figured out that uh, plants are a lot different than than we would originally think them to be. Right? Mm-hmm. They're they're a lot more similar to us and to other animals. Than we would originally have thought. Yeah, totally. So, so uh, I think it was the University of Missouri. They 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 did this test where they took this this like really intense microphone mm-hmm. and they recorded a caterpillar eating leaves. Ooh. And it's it's kind of what you would imagine it was like like l- little chomping sounds. Mm-hmm. But what they did is they they took that sound and they played it back to a different plant. And the plant actually heard the sound. They don't have ears, right? Mm. But they heard the sound somehow, and uh, hearing that, they secreted more of this certain chemical. It's a toxic chemical. I think it's like some sort of like a mustard 
uh, Seagate or something. Interesting. Uh, that's that's meant for defense against being eaten. Holy right? shit! Exactly. So so it, it's like the plant knew what that sound was, what the sound of eating it being eaten sounded like, and it knew how to defend against it. Man. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. So, so the these plants have a lot. So it's like previously, it, it seems like um, when you think about plants, you just think about something that exists in the environment and doesn't really interact with it too much. Mm-hmm. It, it 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 just kind of flows along with everything else, kind of like wind blowing, uh, you know, whatever. Like uh, rocks being weathered by water, shit like that. You thought like plants are just part of this, and they don't interact with it in any particular way. Yeah. When actually. They have defense systems, and and know what's not them. If that makes any sense. So so what this shows is they have a certain consciousness. You follow? Yeah. Okay. So I know consciousness is a hard thing to define, really, but the easiest way to define consciousness is to, uh, it's it's spatial, really. Uh-huh. It's the ability to to say that you are a body, and you are separate from 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 the other, from the outside. Interesting. So, so let me give you an example. Okay. When when you're a little baby, you don't like like I'm talking like before two years old. Yeah. You don't quite realize what isn't you and what is you. Right. You're kind of like in this like big tri- trippy state where where you don't understand spatially what you're touching isn't you, and like and like what is separate. Uh huh. Okay. But so, but then you develop that through time through experience. Right. You learn who your mother is, things like that. Yeah. Now plants. According to this study and a few other studies, understand that, and they know what's there, and they can actually move around obstacles. So it's like a plant's root system that's like moving around underground. Uh-huh. If they can sense an obstacle before they hit it and move out of the way, the root system will move out of the way and avoid it. Interesting. So it's like the, we think of plants as not moving very much. Yeah. But they're actually in constant motion. It's just really slow. It's just so they don't move as fast as animals. Uh-huh. And as people, but but they have the same sort of tendencies, and not only that, uh, the, they're also social beings. So like 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 I, I dug into this because I can tell. Okay, <laughs> because um, they also communicate, not not only through the root systems, but they communicate. Uh, uh, I want to say verbally, but like auditorily. So plants actually make sounds when they grow uh-huh. that other plants can hear. Holy shit! And they react to that, so they know what plants are growing, what, what what plants aren't growing, and 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 they and they can also give each other other nutrients through their root systems. So, okay, so if it was like a mother plant, she realizes what plant uh, is her like uh, uh, seedling, uh-huh. what, what plant came from her, yeah, and she'll actually give those plants more nutrients than other plants. So they have family favoritism. Doesn't that fucking blow your mind? Yeah. P- plants, plants have so, have have a society. There's a society. I mean, I know I sound like a like like a wacko tree hugger right now, but this, but 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 these are recent things in the past few years that people have actually studied. I mean, plants can even learn. I mean, yeah. What do you mean? What do you mean? I mean, yeah. <laughs> are you just agreeing with me? Well, half and half on that one. Okay. Half and half, and like that, it, as in it, like doesn't surprise me. Really, it, it doesn't surprise you. No, like, so you've always thought of plants as, as these like sentient beings. Um, not like sentient beings, but like I knew there had to be some you know shit going on there. You There's know some fuckery in the plant world. Yeah, like like yeah. these these are some tricky bastards. I bet they got a bigger operation going on. Right. I bet fucking John well, Gotti had a deal with the fucking plants and with the feds. That's why he's in prison. Is the, pl- the plants are keeping him out of prison? Who's John Gotti? John Gotti. He was the head of like the Gambino family. Back in oh, like the 80s and 90s. I was trying to make a mob what, joke. Are you saying he was a plant? <laughs> John Gotti, a swamp thing. What's up, man? That'd be fucking cool. Like, I'd wa- I I would watch that show. Out of fucking prison. Hey. Well, he wouldn't have to. Swamp thing can just like suck, like get sucked into the earth and like appear somewhere else. Yeah, Did you know that? Look, you can read more swamp thing. Uh, but um, no, plants can be dropped, right? So so there was another. I'm sorry, I'm going in in, in hard on these plants. But I think it's interesting, so fuck it. But what you said was, yeah, okay. You said this had something to do with vegans or vegans. Yeah, well, well, the the reason I I, I really wanted to look into this is because I don't understand the vegan philosophy. Mm-hmm. I find it to be faith based and 
kind of dog... What are you doing, Ripley? Oh, she's just climbing. Oh, okay. I find it to be somewhat dogmatic. Okay. They, 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 they all believe the same thing, and they don't necessarily have a good reason to believe the same thing. Dogma? I love that movie. <laughs> Kevin Smith is a fucking god. Oh, I thought you were talking about the Lars von Trier movie. No, I watch good movies. Lars von Trier is garbage, but I won't get into that. That's a, that is a different story. Yeah. Um... No, well, I mean, I understand the sentiment of a vegan, right? Mm-hmm. So, it's all, it's all about uh, lessening suffering, mm-hmm. right? They they don't like the suffering in the world, and they think that people haven't really paid attention to the suffering of animals, which is true. You know, the whole industrial revolution. You know, we just kept making more and more, more and more uh, farms, and killing more and more animals for more and more people, right? Uh, and 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 it got dirtier and dirtier. I mean, you've seen like like those those movies like Food Inc. and shit like that. Yeah. You know, those things are gross. You you you, you see what happens. So I understand not wanting all that to happen, but and not wanting to kill animals. But at the same time, plants have a lot of the same characteristics. So 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 plants are sentient. Plants can learn. Plants are intelligent. Plants have memories, dude. Yeah 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 yeah. Plants. Yeah. It's it's been shown that plants have a memory up to forty days. Plants can remember something. Uh-huh. So like like uh, if you if you drop a plant right, um, it'll it'll kind of like uh, it's it, it its leaves will kind of fold up in like a defensive position. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you keep doing that and like catching it and not letting it fall all the way down, uh, eventually it'll stop reacting to the fall. Interesting. So it's learned that that sensation of falling isn't going to hurt it, and you can come back like weeks later mm-hmm. and do it, and again, it won't it like like it won't react to it. Now, if you want to cross that over, uh, bees mm-hmm. and other insects have um, well, I think bees have a little bit longer memory. I think bees have like a forty eight hour memory, but other insects like flies have a twenty four hour memory. So, so they have much shorter memories compared to plants. So in a way, plants are more intelligent than insects. So plants are more sentient, more alive, mm-hmm. and like an intelligence point of view, than, than other animals that we would consider, you know, to be more sentient. So what you're saying is that you don't understand why vegans don't eat meat or use animal products, but they do consume plant life yeah. when plant life have – Almost the same similarities, if not right. more, right. than the animal products they refuse uh, to eat and use. Yeah, well, let me elaborate a little bit, right? Okay. So, so what a vegan will tell you is, when you ask a vegan why are you why are you a vegan? I'm just eating animals. That's fine. They're just animals. They're not people. What they'll do is, they might not tell you this to your face, but it's what they think. It's in their core belief system. It's you're a speciesist. Yes. It's you don't value other living organisms as much as you value people, and that's fucked up. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like calling it's like it's like a vegan way of calling you a racist. You're a speciesist. Yeah. Um now the way I see it, I'm I'm pro- I, I could be totally wrong. I'm also an idiot by the way, so this could be totally wrong. I mean same. <laughs> but if you follow that to its logical conclusion, it seems to be that plants have the same thing. J- just because a plant doesn't have a brain in its head and 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 veins and a nervous system mm-hmm. doesn't mean it can't feel. Yeah. Doesn't mean it can't interact with its environment in a in a in a real way. So that's what I mean when I say that the vegan position seems to be full of dogma. Is because I don't think they've actually covered all the bases. I don't think that they realized just how much you almost have to kill to eat. If you're yeah. killing if you're if if you're killing a living thing, whether it's a bug or you know uh, a fucking orchid or an apple or a gazelle. It's still alive, and it still interacts with its environment in the same way. We, we're we just sort of biased since we're flesh to other flesh-like yeah. beings, if that makes any sense. I mean, I, and I get where you're coming at. I probably I probably sound insane right now. You sound – it's not that insane. It, what, it, what it comes off as is you're not wrong. Well, but thank you. But you're digging. Oh, yeah, You're taking I know. a tiny thing. It's like Play-Doh. When, yeah. you, when you do that between your hands – Flatten it out, and you kind of just mm, mm. get it as thin as you possibly can. You know what I'm right. saying? Well, you know me, Trevor. I am. Whenever I feel like I'm wrong about something, uh-huh. I have to find how how I'm not wrong. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I have to I have to go look up things on the internet that prove me right, so that I can use them in discourse and fuck with people. 
That's really all I am. You know, oh, okay, so in the least sexist, in the most PC way, I am, in fact, a giant cunt. Because I get that. No, <laughs> if I'm having okay, so let's say I'm talking to like, okay, so let's say we're we're talking about veganism. Yeah. For the most part, I totally agree with them. Mm -hmm. I totally agree that animals shouldn't have to suffer. Until someone's like, and why the fuck do you eat meat? Exactly. Until I talk to a vegan, then I'm like, I eat steaks every day, and bitch. And you're like, me? <laughs> How right. the god? Yeah, yeah. And then I'm going to fight you. I'm going to fight you so hard, even if I agree with you. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. Who so, do you think you're talking to? Ex precisely. <laughs> I don't go down without a fight, even if I think you're right. Bars. Right? I just, oh, my God. I should be a rapper. <laughs> Do it, do it, do it! Hey, so, Cole. Hey, yeah. Cole. What's up? <laughs> what? You see those plants? What, 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 what plants? Over there? You, those plants? Yeah, you see those plants? Yeah, I see those plants. They want some dick? <laughs> they want some dick. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, in the entire fucking car ride, yeah. we, we, we had like a five hour just kind we're, of... We were looking for a new place to live, actually. Yeah. But that's neither here nor there. If you care, we'll tell you later. Mm. But he was just pointing out random things and was just like, see that? Yeah. It wants some dick. See that? See that chair over there, Trevor? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You see it? Yeah. It's looking over here, isn't it? Yeah. Hey, Trevor, that chair? Yeah. It wants some dick. Oh! Hey, Trevor. What's up? You see that mic in front of your face? Mm-hmm. The, the mic right there? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's real fluffy and shit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my god, you know what it wants? What? It was some dick. Oh my god. Yeah, it got, oh. it, it was, it, it got unfunny after like the 20th time I yeah. said it. Yeah. But I still kept saying it. You know, it, and I do I'm, that I'm too. I, I will, beat jokes to death. I will, I will fucking use that thing until it's, it's not funny and then I'll keep mm -hmm. using it. Yeah, it's great. You do actually use the same jokes over and over again about everything. I do, but I'm a simple man. I might be a little, mm -hmm. you know, slow. Yeah. So I don't really give a shit. I just keep doing my well, own thing. The, um, the amount of – because you – okay, you, so your favorite thing to talk about. Yes. Every day. It, it doesn't matter if it's the first thing in the morning, I just got home from work, or, or we're eating dinner or whatever. You like to remind me that you're fucking my mom. Oh, yeah, yeah, no yeah, yeah. what's yeah, going yeah. on. Yeah, yeah. And I think it's, it's hilarious. Gotten, it's gotten to the point that I almost believe you. Do you now? <laughs> I'm not going to give you that. But what I am going to give you is some is some more science knowledge, Trevor. Oh, fuck. Because yeah. th – okay, so this happened like three, four months ago. But I still think it's the shit. Because for some reason there's a group of people out there who don't want to admit that space is real. Oh, God. I and, these guys. And, and, you know, I don't – you know, well, there's five people listening to this podcast right now. And if any of you are flat earthers, you can just get the fuck out. Because here's yeah. the thing, ladies and gentlemen. Watching at home, listening at home, what the fuck ever. Yeah. There is no if, ands, or buts about this. No. I don't know if we can, but right across the screen right here. Oh, right there. What's up, guys? Space is real. Space is real. We have telescopes. You know, we have, we, we have naval navigation. You know, there's so many things that prove that prove the space is real. If you think that Earth and life is some weird conscious, like conceptual thing you have in your own mind, get like oh, Trevor, that's hard solve system. That's different. Whatever. I don't, if you think the Earth that's is also stupid though. Hard solve system is also yeah. stupid. If you think the Earth is flat, you a bitch. You, yeah, like why? Like why? You know what? C can we get a flat earther on the podcast? If any of y'all know anyone, yeah. send, us us a, know. send us a comment. We, we would love to talk to a flat earther. Yeah. But what I really want to talk about is something that – I mean it was news a while ago, but okay. Like I said, NASA found a star system called TRAPPIST-1. I heard about that. I heard about you that. You did hear about that? Yes, 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 yes. Okay. Yes. Do, you, do, you, do you know anything about it? I don't know shit about you it. You heard All the I name know TRAPPIST-1. It's pretty fucking neat. You, you don't know anything about it, but you know it's cool. Mm -hmm. It is cool. Because they found a star system, and it's a star that's a little bit bigger than Jupiter, but much more massive. Yeah. Oh, sick. Yeah. And there, I think there's seven planets orbiting it, and all of, and all of them, five especially, are right there in the Goldilocks zone. 
Now, you know what the Goldilocks zone is? I have not a clue. Okay, so you remember the story of Goldilocks? Yes. It's not too hot, not too cold. Uh-huh. Okay, so what the Goldilocks zone means is it's right there in the middle. It's perfect. Ooh. So Earth, for example, Ooh. is in the Goldilocks zone. Yeah. So we can support life. That's all that means. Yes, 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 yes. Is we have, we have water that can support life, and we're in that perfect spot in an orbit around our sun that, that, it, that it can sustain you know, large biomasses <gasps> like us. So in this star system called TRAPPIST-1, there's a number of planets, and they're very closely orbiting. Like, like you can literally see um, – not – you can see details of the planet from the other planets, if that makes any yes, sense. Yeah. That, that, that's how close they are. It's like Star Wars shit. And Space. The final frontier. The final frontier. Well, that's Star Trek. But, um, Thank you. No problem. But yeah, so so scientists <laughs> believe that. <laughs> so scientists believe that that, could, that that they can support life there. Interesting. Now, where do I sign up? Oh, okay, it's it's forty light years away, so I don't think we're going there anytime soon. Well, I'm gonna find my dude Buzz. Buzz Aldrin or Buzz Lightyear? Buzz Lightyear. <laughs> he finna fly us all out there. Yeah. You know, all get, all inclusive. Or at least fall in All inclusive vacation to Trappist One. I mean, I'm down to go to Mars. Dude, those gas clouds. It's gonna be fucking rager. It's gonna be legend. Wall, Kager on Mars, bro. Dude, did you hear what happened on Mars? I'm yeah, like, dude, there was a Arnold Schwarzenegger was there. There was yeah. like a girl with three boobs there, dude. Sick. Epic. I heard that Kendall Jenner had an abortion on Mars. <laughs> We're gonna have the first Martian. She fucking killed it. Oh my god, fuck her. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. But yeah, I would, love, I would love to live on Mars. Dude, that'd be awesome. Honestly, honestly, like I'm, I'm, I'm with it. I'm for it. So I'm sick of so, Earth. Okay, let's say, uh. What's his name? Elon Musk and SpaceX. Yes, yes, yes. They yes. make a shuttle, and they're like, all right. They call you up. Trevor, you want to go to Mars? We're going to send, um, like, a what was it called? A pilgrimage of people out there. Mm-hmm. You're going to populate Mars. You're never coming back to Earth again. Yes. Would you go? Yes. Me too. Hell yeah. I love my girlfriend. Yeah. I love her dearly, yeah. but she will understand. Well, she might not, but it doesn't matter. She's on a different planet than you are. No, it does matter, but she would understand. She'd be like, he's doing bigger and better things. Right. Cause, because, I mean – I feel like in the past that there were places to go that have never been gone to before. That and people could kind of like tame wild lands, if you want to call it that. And I picture that. Here's the thing. I'm going to do a little movie pitch for you guys, okay. right? Okay. So that happens, right? Got the shot already. I'm in my astronaut outfit, right? Me and the other like 11 dudes and gals were walking down, right? As we're walking towards the shuttle, Guns N' Roses cover of Knocking on Heaven's Door plays. <laughs> we're kissing our families goodbye. Mm-hmm. And, you know... Mama, take this bird from me. I don't need it anymore. Wow. You know, that song's playing. And we Gorgeous. get in the shuttle. And then credits roll. Do, 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 do. Now, 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 get on heaven's door. Is that how it begins? No, that's how it's going to end. It's going to begin. So, oh, it's so you never be... see Mars in the movie? No, no, that's the beauty of it. Well, during the credits, there's going to be, like, video in the background where we're flying. Towards Mars, and then, oh. and then, and there's gonna be an after credit scene where we're like, "Holy fuck, it's Mars!" So the whole movie is if they go to Mars or not. Yeah, 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 oh. yeah. I actually probably watched that movie. The movie, the movie's gonna open up with, uh... <clears throat> shit, that's a tough one. Turn up the radio by Autograph. Oh, I was thinking more like a David Bowie song. Dancing in the streets. <laughs> Doesn't he have some spacey songs? Songs about. David Bowie has songs about space. I've never been a huge David Bowie fan. He so. definitely has songs about space. I mean, he probably does. Oh, no, 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 no. It should be something with, like, uh, Ace Freely from Kiss, since he's a spaceman. Space Ace. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. So, b- before we log off and call this a podcast... Oh, we shit. Ha- is we- it that time? Yeah. It's getting, it's about, it's getting there? It, it, it's about that time. All right, all right. I think we should talk about something that actually happened this week. Something that we actually did, ladies and gentlemen. And, <laughs> and spoiler alert. Yeah, big time fucking yeah, spoiler if you, alert. If you don't want to hear about Spider-Man Homecoming and the details that go along with it, I mean, I don't really give a fuck. You can listen or you can't listen, whatever. Like, turn it off if You've you have already gotten this far, so you might as well just listen to it. But if you haven't seen the movie, don't listen to it. True, that might piss somebody because, off. Because, like, literally, like, Cole specifically said, no. 
I don't care. I'm going into detail. <laughs> I did. I feel like you can't talk about the movie without giving shit away. Yeah, so we're going to talk about it. If you've seen it, listen to it. If you haven't, go yeah, to well, fucking your movie theater, pay $10, watch that shit, come at, back. At this point, they've probably already turned it off. Okay, so let's go. I feel like we're free. Yeah. Just you and me talking about Spider-Man. Hell yeah. Okay, so you liked it, right? Hell fucking yeah, I liked it. You I thought it was it. the best Marvel movie they've made in years. And by Marvel movie, you mean movie made by Marvel Studios? Yeah, I never understood the, the, the concept of that, but yes. Well, you don't understand the concept of it. Like, okay, when I say Marvel, I mean Marvel characters. That's not what, okay, but that's not what that means anymore. You know that. I mean, I know that's not what that means, but you know what you I know mean. You know who made this, this this movie, right? It was the Watt guy, right? What? They already directed it? Oh, no, no, no. I mean, like, what studio? Like, Sony made the movie. Yeah. Well, they had a deal with the MCU to add Spider-Man into their universe. Interesting. So Sony still made it? Sony's made all of the Spider-Man movies. Yeah. Um, including this one. But but they just cut a deal with Marvel, like, like the actual Marvel Studios, uh-huh. to allow him in. Interesting. And Fox makes Marvel movies too, but Fox makes all the – Fox made Deadpool and Fox made all the X-Men movies. Yeah. So, the, but, but then all the other ones, besides Daredevil, uh, were made by Marvel. Just, just Marvel. Interesting. You didn't know that? I didn't know the, the like the the business side behind it. Oh, oh, I pay attention to it. Cause to me, that shit doesn't really matter. If it does though. It does. Which studio makes the movie changes the whole movie. I guess. All I know is Spider Man was the fucking tits. Right. Well. Uh, oh. Okay. I I loved it and I didn't like it all at the same time. Why didn't you like it? Because you know me. I like old. I like an older Spider Man. I like a more mature Spider Man. That's fair. Thirty year old. You know, he's already mar- married Mary Jane. That kind of Spider-Man. Yeah. Uh, so I'm getting a little sick of the high school Spider-Man. Mm-hmm. But I understand why he's there. It makes people want to watch it more. It gets kids involved. Shit like that. See, see my thing is, 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 the thing with is, is, is. <laughs> but my thing is, being the third Spider-Man reboot. Yes. Or technically second reboot, I guess. Third n- Spider-Man. Yeah. In after the, played by Spider-Man. In the last two decades. Um... I like how they're starting from scratch. They're starting from the beginning. Fuck that, dude. No. No, no. Here's I want, the thing. I'm tired of origin stories. Here's the thing, though. With origin stories. I'm tired. The reason why it's been kind of shitty, though, is because the actors necessarily haven't been that good at portraying a younger person. Now, with Tom Holland being a 15-year-old kid, because he's pretty young himself, I think he does 15-year-old right. So you should also feel a sense of relief. That if Tom Holland stays being Spider-Man and Sony keeps this thing going, you're not going to get another high school story again. Oh, this is the last one? Dude, dude the sequel is probably – because he was like a fucking sophomore in this one. He's probably still going to be He's in He's still school. high school, but I mean I think that's w- w- what makes one of the most enjoyable qualities of, 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 of Spider-Man. He's, he's young and he's dweeby and he's nerdy and he's stupid and but really smart and shit like that. And he, you know, he's clumsy and shit. I think that's what makes Spider-Man hilarious. And that's another thing. This movie was hilarious. I, at least I thought. I mean, it was. Hannibal Buress was pretty funny. I thought the movie was just riddled with laughs. Really? I thought it was so funny. I did. I mean, I don't want to sound like a, like like a bastard, but I didn't, I I didn't find the comedy that funny, except for how Han- I thought Hannibal Buress, his two scenes, hilarious. Yeah. But like my like okay, so how I would explain this movie for for guys like me, how I would explain the movie is um, it's kind of like. A shitty John Hughes movie, but also mixed in with a really, really good Spider-Man movie. Okay. Okay, so there's a few things that I did in the movie that – okay, so I'm convinced that Spider-Man is the greatest hero of all time, greatest superhero of all time. Okay. Um, and, and there's a few reasons for that, and they touched on a lot of them in the movie. Yes. Okay, so one of the reasons is his villains. Uh-huh. Right, the Spider-Man villains uh, – the good ones, at least, are tied in with his personal life, too. Exactly. So you get Norman Osborn and Harry Osborn as the Green Goblin. Of course, he was best friends. His best friend's dad. They're right there with him. Venom. Uh, Peter Parker ruined Eddie Brock's career. So then Venom comes out of that. You know, he, he, he fucks with his family, things like that. And in this movie, they were able to capture that really, really well. But um, only in the third act, though. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, so first and second act of the movie... I thought we're okay. Mm-hmm. Third act of the movie, it gets really fucking good. It, yeah. It, it, it really just like stomps 
on the fucking speed pedal. Because, um, I mean, we're, we, like we said, we're, we're going to spoil it. Whenever, whenever, whenever Spider-Man shows up to his girlfriend's house yeah. to take her to prom, and then fucking Michael Keaton opens the door, that made me lose my shit. I know. I was like, okay. what the fuck? And then when later they pull up, he's like, I'm going to talk to Peter for a little bit. And he's like, the first words he says to him, he fucking pulls out a gun, and he's like, so does she know? Yeah. yeah. And, and he's I, like, I don't know what you're talking great. about. He's like, cut the bullshit. I know, I know, who, you, I know who you are. You know who I am, right? If you fuck with my family, yeah, I'll kill you. Yeah. So yeah, a- exactly. So at first, the vulture in the movie was like he was acted really well, but the character was like, all right, I get it. He's a guy f- fucked over by the government, trying to make some money. Spider Man's in his way. He wants to fucking kill him. I get that. But then he makes it super personal, and when it gets really personal, is when the story gets so interesting. Exactly. So exactly. Oh, okay, okay. So that one of the best parts of Spider Man. Mm-hmm. Another great thing about Spider-Man is that he's all about perseverance. Exactly. Is that Spider-Man gets his ass whooped on a regular basis. Whooped case. hard. Spider-Man can't beat shit. Because Spider-Man, especially young Spider-Man, is not a very good – Is not a good, he's not a good fighter. No, he's not. He's getting his ass kicked. So exactly. in this movie, they did that really well. Almost every scene when he's fighting somebody, except for maybe the first fight scene – He's getting he's he's getting torn to shit. Uh-huh. So it's like he doesn't even beat Vulture, honestly. Vulture kicks Spider Man's ass in that movie. Yeah. And and in that last fight, and then he's just flying away. He just he's just leaving. Yeah. And then and then Peter Parker has to has to save him when Vulture fucking blows up or whatever. Of course. So it's like it's that perseverance and um I like that a lot because it reminded me of old Spider Man comics. Uh kinda like that scene when, when, when Spidey is like breaking out of all that rubble. Yeah, that's reminiscent of a lot of old Spider-Man comics. Mm-hmm. Um, another great thing about Spider-Man as a character um, is that he's like a man torn, torn in between two worlds. Exactly, exactly. Um, so that's where you actually need like the whole like high school story. But uh, they also did a pretty good job of demonstrating that symbolically. Whenever he's What's being the torn symbology apart, the there? symbology. Yeah, uh, the. The, there's the whole metaphor behind him being torn in half with the uh, with the fairy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Um, and they've done that with with other Spider Sp- Spider Man movies too. But that also makes it really interesting. It's kind of like the the duality of the character. You know, should he be Spider Man? Should he just be Peter Parker? Can he can he deal with both? That makes the, that makes the character so interesting because every single person, no matter who you are, has to deal with multiple things all at the same time. Yeah. And it feels like you're juggling like a multiple different lifestyles, so it makes Spider Man that much more relatable. I think. Speaking of which, another really cool, interesting thing is they threw in my boy Matt Gargan, the Scorpion. Yeah. And who hasn't even been mentioned in a Spider-Man movie Ever. to date. Yeah. Also, they threw in my boy Shocker, yeah. who also so hasn't been I mentioned knew you in would a love movie. That. And I your fucking favorite. loved it. Now, another part, okay, other than those two, like kind of I wouldn't necessarily Wait, say can cameos. Can I, can I talk about Scorp- Scorpion real quick? Yeah, go for it. Okay, so I thought it was really funny. So, so he's on the ferry, and they say, oh, look, that's Matt Gargan. Immediately, being a Spider-Man super nerd, I was like, oh, I was like, oh it's fucking Scorpion. But then they zoom in on his face, and then he has a tattoo of a scorpion on his neck. Right. I was like, okay, Marvel Universe, you're holding our hand. I was like, exactly. I, I, was like I get it. Exactly. I, I know who he is. Well, and the thing is, another thing is, is they changed his story around. They said he was like a convicted murderer. But he wasn't. No, not in the comics. He, he was paid by J. Jonah Jameson to put on the stupid suit and yeah. act like a supervillain so J. Jonah Jameson could go to get put, picture, right. but then he couldn't get out of the suit for some odd reason. Well, they changed around a lot of the yeah. stories. But, like, they, they did that to fit in with the Marvel Universe. Yeah. Right? They, I mean, that is one of the biggest problems, I guess, with, with the actual Marvel movies is that they change origin stories and just stories in general around to fit their general narrative. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which I don't have a huge problem with, but it, it is slightly annoying when you're like, that's not how that happened. Exactly. <laughs> um, one of the best parts, or one of the better parts I thought about it, too, is they kind of gave um, Tony Stark a little redemption in this movie from him being such a fucking cuck <laughs> in Civil War. I, I actually liked him in Civil War. See, I thought he was a bit of an asshole, but in this movie, he's like, all right, Tony Stark, you're not so bad. Well, yeah, he, he took over the father figure. He was like the Uncle Ben in the movie, yeah. but he just didn't die. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Tony Stark was Uncle Ben, but no death. I mean, like, Iron Man, the suit was there more than fucking actual Tony Stark was. Oh, yeah, that's funny. <coughs> yeah, there was a little bit too much Stark in it, but um, 
Oh, oh, okay, but like all that aside, what I really did like about the movie, on top of everything, is that they added in a lot of little, um, little extra things for like really big Spider-Man fans. Yeah. So it's like, did you notice that um, uh, the the little uh, sp- spider web like like glider things? Yeah, was on, awesome. Under his arm, that that was in a lot of the comic books. We'd never seen that before in yeah. a movie. He had the spider tracker. Yeah. Where he shot it on the guy. The spider tracker was a big part of the comics. Yeah. Uh, so we can you know track down bad guys. Uh, the spider signal. Uh, that that th- uh, that was in it for like one little shot. He like I think he was in that big uh, warehouse. He shot spire signal like like on the wall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, spire signal is something that not very many people remember in Spider Man, uh-huh. but he had it to like scare villains. Um, and then oh, but my favorite thing was um, that whenever he loses his main suit, he gets that like al- he, he has that alternate suit that ha- that like he made. Yeah, and it kind of looks reminiscent of the Scarlet Spidey, like 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 Ben Riley's yeah. Scarlet Spidey, which is my favorite Spider Man. It's just the colors were reversed. The colors were reversed exactly. So it's like um. His his hoodie was red, and then the rest of it was yeah. was was blue. And then they show the Iron Spider at the end, the Iron yeah, Spider yeah, suit, yeah, which from, was pretty cool from Civil War, which probably comes from people complaining about the Civil War movie and Spider Man not having the Civil War costume. Yeah, exactly. But oh well. Well, yeah. So yeah, watch Spider Man. Watch if, fucking Spider Man. It was good. It, it was a, it was worth the watch. I know, like personally, I've been getting a little off of the superhero movies. Mm-hmm. I haven't been wanting to watch them because. Like it's mainly DC. DC's been bit pissing me off. Yeah. But anyway, uh, I think that's a I think I think, I think yeah, that's a podcast right there. That's a that's a wrap on that one. Mm-hmm. Um, thanks but, for tuning in. Yeah, I hope you enjoy watching. You can uh, like, comment, subscribe, or you can just fuck off, whatever. Or you can like us on SoundCloud. Um, again, <laughs> sorry, I didn't mean to say that. <laughs> I mean, you can fuck off. I mean, I don't you know, can I mean, if you want. Yeah, I mean, that's a, your own prerogative. Yeah, exactly. But uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for tuning in. This has been the Bad Apartment Podcast. Remember, like Cole said. Like, comment, subscribe. We're putting shit out every fucking Sunday. These episodes are going to keep on coming back with a vengeance. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Trevor. I am Cole. This has been the motherfucking Bad Apartment Podcast, baddies. We'll check you later. Later, bitches.